Another look inside a medical marvel, an unprecedented and in many ways unbelievable full face transplant. It's the story of a heroic firefighter, his face burned in a rescue mission, a BMX biker whose generosity of spirit makes it possible, and the top-notch surgeon on the frontier of modern medicine. Three remarkable men whose lives are now forever linked. I got to sit down with the recipient, Pat Hardison, and his transformation took my breath away. In a city where people will do almost anything to stand out, Pat Hardison just wants to blend in. It's really unbelievable, all the stuff that you see in New York. My daughters would love it because they could shop for ever. A loving father of five from Mississippi, who for 14 years now has hidden behind a hat and sunglasses. So I'm going to have you take off your hat. That rest on prosthetic ears. And take off your ears for me for a second. Let's see how these are doing. Pat's come to NYU Langone Medical Center to undergo the most extensive face transplant ever attempted. A medical team led by surgeon Eduardo Rodriguez has been preparing for this unprecedented surgery for three years now. And this is a very graphic image, but it gives you an understanding of everything that's going to be removed. He warns Pat the painstaking procedure to remove his scar tissued face and replace it with a new one could kill him. His chance of surviving, just 50-50. The reality is we can, we can make you much worse than you are now. And if this were not to work, we've actually made you worse than you were before. So you completely understand this, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. It's a risk Pat is more than willing to take. Because for more than a decade, Pat's lived with the scars, both physical and mental, from the fire that burned off his face. It's a normal day, wasn't it? Just, just like every other fire. It was 2001. Pat was a volunteer fireman responding to a house fire. He rushed headlong into the flames to rescue a woman believed to be inside. He went in uh, looking for a lady. And nobody was sure she was at home. Me and Pat were in the bedroom. Everything kind of fell apart. I can't remember exactly how it was. I just remember the ceiling collapsed and it, I could just see everything coming down. Pat's face was burned so badly, the other firefighters didn't even know it was him until they loaded him into the ambulance. He pulled me down over his face and he said, take care of Chrissy and the kids. That's when I knew who I had. We closed the door on that ambulance and I I figured it's the last time I'd ever see a lot. You know, Daddy left one way, and then when I came back home, I was a totally different person. Pat spent 63 days in the hospital, recovering from burns that robbed him of his scalp, ears, and nose. His eyelids and lips also gone. When he got home, his young children were terrified. I think the first time I realized like what he had gone through was the first time I saw him. Allison, Pat's oldest daughter, was just six at the time. And I remember going out to the house and my mom and stepdad literally had to drag me in the house because I was scared. Over time, his devastated family adjusted. To us, he became normal. He looked normal. We didn't think anything of it. Ever the family man, he went on to have two more children. But inside, he was struggling. The guy, once known as the life of the party, became withdrawn, depressed, and began abusing his pain medication. His friends felt helpless. It was hard for me to tell him, and it's even harder for him to hear it and accept it as the truth. He endured months of surgeries. Doctors were able to approximate a mouth, nose, and lips, even fashioning those ears. Look to the left, and look to the right. But there was nothing they could do about his missing eyelids. Without them, Pat would go blind. He went through, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 surgeries over a period of three, four, five years. I can't imagine what it does to you mentally. So he was eager to do whatever it took to get his life back. Get the dog, get the dog. Hopes now pinned on a trailblazing surgeon. There are a lot of pieces that have to come together. In the emerging field of face transplants, did he need this surgery? No. In the traditional sense? He could have stayed this way as long as he would have lived. However, Pat was not living by our standards. Let's go. I'm that ready. For patients like that, it's important for us to kind of 
slow the process down and ensure that they completely understand what they're getting into. Well, these are great, great photographs in here. Before moving forward, Dr. Rodriguez one. needed to manage Pat and his family's expectations. What if we do the surgery and everything is reasonably successful, but your expectations are not met? I'll be better than what I am today. I'm not saying get me back like I was in yeah. you know, September the 4th, 2001. I'm saying get me back normal looking as you can. NYU Langone Medical Center would cover the million dollar procedure in the name of research. I was a little freaked out about it. I knew that it was always something that he would want to help make him feel what you would call normal again. But they needed the perfect donor. The wait was excruciating. It's just a day by day thing, you know. Get up every morning, you think it's day to day, you know, you, the next day the same way. He basically told me he didn't know if he wanted to keep living. We prayed about it, and here we are getting the surgery, so, but yeah, it was tough. Only possible through a twist of fate that would forever link Pat to a man he would never meet. Dave was, without a doubt, like the best guy you never met. His name was Dave Rodebaugh, a 26-year-old bike mechanic who lived in Brooklyn, New York. Dave loved to ride. He even won this Red Bull-sponsored race last year. Upset. Dave was fatally injured biking home from work. His tight-knit group of friends memorializing him with a ghost bike at the scene of his accident. Dave's mom there for the tribute. Dave matched every single criteria Pat and his doctors had been waiting for. Age, hair, skin color, blood type, even skeletal measurements. When Dave's mom was asked if she'd donate his organs, she didn't hesitate. She knew straight away David would have done anything to help. She was told she could never have children, and she had David. And she felt very much that he was a miracle, and that by doing this, the miracle would continue. Dave was the perfect donor, and his kidneys, liver, and heart would save four other lives. The man that got his heart, I'd like to just like meet him and be like, I'd like you to know that you have a lion's heart. You feel good? Yeah. A quick hug from his sister, and Pat's wheeled into the OR. Dr. Rodriguez's plan? Remove what's left of Pat's scarred face and scalp and replace them with donor tissue, muscles, even nerves. The donor's body in the room next door, where another surgical team takes a moment to reflect before surgery. And now we'll take a moment of silence to honor the life of David A warning, some of the footage you're about to see is graphic. Dr. Rodriguez begins working on the donor, every step finally choreographed with the team next door. All our watches are synchronized, the teams are ready to go. The donor's face is slowly and delicately removed, every incision perfectly timed and in sequence. They now begin removing Pat's face. There is constant communication, so they do not compromise the scalp until I can give them confirmation that the scalp is viable. They do not take the eyelids off until they know that I've reached a point of no return because we have to keep Pat safe. And I keep an eye on the clock at all times to know that we're on track with every step of our operation. Eight hours later, Pat's face, which was mostly scar tissue, has been removed. Well, when you take someone's entire face off, I and mean, you're essentially looking at raw tissue, the muscles of facial expression, the eyeballs are essentially exposed. Pat is just a few feet away from his new face. The transplant can finally begin. There's a lot of concern in my mind, are we able to deliver this? We got one chance to basically land this on the moon perfectly. When Nightline returns.